A relationship with the right referral partner could be a game changer for any B2B company. So what if you could reverse engineer these relationships at a moment's notice? Start a podcast. Invite potential referral partners to be guests on your show. And grow your referral network faster than ever. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm James Carberry. And I'm Jonathan Green. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. We are here today with Vern Hanslick. He is the president and CEO of QMU. Vern, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Vern, I'm really excited to chat with you today. We're going to be talking about video trends in B2B marketing. But before we get into these three very specific trends that we're going to be unpacking on the show, I'd love for you to just give our listeners a little bit of context as to why you're the guy to be talking about this topic. Uh, so tell us about what, what you and your team are up to at QMU. Well, we're, you, we're focused exclusively on uh, video with inside the enterprise and what is a term called video content management or software delivery. So video is a, a very powerful uh, means. And so we be, build a piece of technology that helps corporations uh, manage that in all constituents, both inside and outside the firewall. And then also just, you know, help people build video content so that they can use it on a day-to-day basis. So um, our platforms help live, you know, live People communicate both internally, externally to all their constituents like broadcast, uh, like Netflix, but it's secure. And we build a piece of technology. We, we help social business with inside of corporations. So the video management piece, uh, and then also communicating to other businesses on how they do that. So we're a platform player. Um, we help organizations do that from a constituent's perspective of how they are going to use video as a different way to communicate in the digital age. I love it. I love it. And so because you guys are so entrenched uh, in this space, Vern, you, you had mentioned as we were talking offline that there are some really powerful trends that you're noticing in video, particularly for B2B marketing. And and this first trend that we're going to talk about today is this idea of of building a trust channel. Can you explain to our listeners you know, what, what you mean by that? What is a trust channel and, and, uh, and what's that look like? Well, these are things that uh, happen. Like we, we've we've had an example in the in the UK where an organization had to get news out very quickly to all of their constituents about Brexit, for example, and they uh, wanted to create a thought leadership immediately, produce a piece of content. You know, content's king, even inside a business. Yep. And they produced this internally on a, on our software. And then they communicated to all their constituents of what was going on so they knew. And it was an invest, the, the audience in this particular environment was an investor group mm. and, and close people that they needed to do. You know, these are in the thousands, not in the hundreds of thousands, but they needed to understand this powerful mission and really what it meant to their constituents for their personal investment. So it was quickly turned. It was produced and pushed out uh, in a matter of hours versus a matter of days. And you got to have a platform to be able to do that. And, and, it, and the trust channel was is that they knew it was coming from this particular organization. And these people knew because it was an, an area that they go to get all their information from this particular uh, financial institution. So it, it's powerful because it happened right away. It was video. It was authentic. And it made the, the people stand up. And it was a trusted group that they knew. And it was a privatized channel. That makes sense. You shared another example as we were talking through this offline uh, about Brooks McDonald. Can you can you share that example with us, friend? Well, that was really the, that's really the example I was talking about. That was that was the Brexit type, and, and it, it was it was powerful. They had tons of readership uh, on this because people were concerned. You know, when the vote happened, it was it was sort of the the, the country kind of froze up. And they really needed to push this out in in front of the in the in front of the constituents. So it just it had to happen quickly. Uh, it got a lot of it got a lot of press after the fact because they were the first ones out, and uh, they couldn't have done that without having a platform to do that. And that's that's the medius of it. But the other component is it's a trusted channel and it's secure. So it it went to only their people and it wasn't into the masses. So it kind of gets lost into the the normal social media, which is powerful. 
Yeah. But this is more on the on the privatized side or business to business side. And then there's an analytics component of that. You you know, in, in mentioning that the the platform is really what enables uh, what enabled them to to pull this off and to do this. Can you speak to to the analytics and why that played such a powerful part in this? Well, when you produce something, it's like anything else. It's sort of like the Nielsen ratings, right? You need to know who opened it, how long did they watch it, when did they cut off. And is it a great piece of content? And so it kind of gives viewership of the types of stuff. And what they learned out of the analytics here is that what, what our platform provides is that says all of those things to you. So you kind of know, wow, this thing was extremely powerful, not just the topic. And that, and that particular one, uh, example is very powerful because it had a lot of, uh, of demand just from a knowledge perspective, but that's what they gauge all of the content they push out to that trusted channel. Yeah. The, the ability to be able to quickly learn what works to know, you know, in, in that case, it, it makes sense that, uh, that, that people very much so want to, uh, want to pay attention to that because it's incredibly relevant from a timing perspective. Um, but, Analytics using a platform like what you guys have brought to market um, allows you to see what content is is holding your your audience's attention, kind of where you lost your audience, uh, you know what what action they took. So I I am a very much a strong believer in in having some sort of a platform to to manage these these videos because of. The, the powerful analytics that can come out of them. Uh, Vern, I, I want to, I want to move on to this, this second trend that you guys are seeing, which is around turning Skype sessions into shareable content assets. Can you talk about, uh, can you talk about this point for a bit? Yeah, let me uh, just, let me frame the context of it just a little bit. So yeah. Skype, Skype meetings are turning from uh, discussions that you have that are audio based to video based. And these meetings are, with constituents around the world, they're in different areas, they're all virtual, and it's, it's, it's becoming a day-to-day. They're the new phone call. And what happens with those is people want to record them because constituents couldn't be in there. Hmm. So what we've provided is a link with inside of Skype for Business that says record. You hit a record button. It streams it to a platform, and we put it into our repository. We created it as a digital asset. Let's say it's a 30-minute a uh, meeting. We provide security to that. We index it intelligently, phonetically, so you can only go to the things that you want. We put it in a library, and then we serve it up depending on who can see it, security-wise. So in some of these situations, once we stream it, record it, uh, we put it up into SharePoint, and then we serve it out of SharePoint um, as a way that where people go. And then where we provide that asset is that do you want it and after a certain period of time, after 30 days, you, you know, you do what's called content management. You put it in offline, um, and, and remove it. But now there's another hundred people that could have looked to see what the value of that meeting because they couldn't make it. They were traveling, whatever the reason is. Now we've created an asset of value. The second component of that is we might want to edit those. Like there might be six meetings that happen. And now we we provide tools at the desktop to stitch those together and create more of a sports center version of of pertinent meetings, depending on what business it is and what their business audience are communicating to. So it's it's very powerful. And and we put this in the hands of everybody at the desktop. Yeah. And um, it's a trend that is coming onto the scene with videos, the new call. Yeah. And, And I think I think people tend to get so caught up in thinking that the video that they produce, at least for external purposes, needs to be slick and and incredibly well produced. Uh, but in reality, great content is, is great content. And so what I love about you know what you're saying is you're you're just capturing conversations that are that are extremely valuable that otherwise would go you know, unpublished or unseen by anyone else. Um, but what, what your product is allowing people to do is, is capture those and then use them either for internal, uh, or, or for external pieces. Am I understanding that right? People are using this both as an internal asset for their, for their team, but they're also sharing these, these calls externally as well. Yes, it, it's both. So where, where it goes is determined by whoever has the rights to move it to an external audience or an internal audience, and then they have the right to, to, to edit it the, appropriately because there is a governance piece to this with inside business. You got to kind of put the right context on it. But 
the, I, you know, the realities are this is kind of reality TV a little bit for business and, and people have some, um, empowerment that they can do this. And that's, you know, that's cultures of businesses and the platform kind of gives you the right governors depending on where you want it to go. So we, we open the platform should be, Hey, it's either internal, external, and it should be able to service both audiences in, in a broad sense. Mm, I love it. All right. This last trend that we're going to talk about, Vern, uh, is, is infusing account based marketing with the video. Can you talk to us about this? Well, well, there's two things. I mean, it's a hot topic. Um, it's something that we do because we, we, we focus on the Fortune 5000 as an organization. And once you get into these large organizations is you have to be horizontal. And in digital marketing, video is the most authentic way to communicate. So you, you produce content uh, that's valuable to wherever you, whatever you're trying to communicate. So that's you know content kings again. You put it into a digital tool. Um, and there's many digital tools, digital marketing tools. The video platform, which we participate in, is there's technologies with inside of that that ought, have to kind of communicate back. We're going to standardize the video assets so they have, whether it's internal, external, your website, you're only using one asset for all different channels. So when you're doing content marketing, you're pointing to your website, you're wanting them to open it. So the analytic piece comes back into play. You have to integrate with these tools that says that person opened it on this day. They watch two minutes of it, and you got to have all that information so you can see the power of your your digital marketing. And then, which departments is it? Is it IT? Is it your partners? Is it um, customers? What audiences did, channels did you use? So, the integration of this account based marketing is a holistic strategy, and we you know the video platform plays a a key role in that ecosystem. And we, we want to know all the things that happened because we either tweaked the message, the video, because of the data that came back in the campaign. Because the campaign's the king. The playbook is the king of what we're trying to do, all the things that happened in there, um, and then the, you know, the characteristics of the people of what's doing it. So you could tweak your marketing message depending on if you're, you know, you're just trying to get horizontal or you're trying to create, you know, very vertical messages uh, for your account-based marketing. Yeah, I, I think that ability to add the custom intros uh, to really personalize the content to a specific, you know, account or persona uh, within the account, I, I think is incredibly powerful. Vern, this has been, uh, this has been really, really helpful. I really appreciate your time today. If there's somebody listening, they want to stay connected with you or they want to learn more about Qmu, what's the best way for them to go about doing that? It's, it's very simple. It's kumu.com. Uh, go to our website. We have lots of different video clips, things that you can learn about us, uh, get people to talk to intelligently about what your needs are around having a video platform, what we discussed today. I love it. So that is QUMU.com. Make sure and check that out. Vern, again, thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank you. If you're a B2B marketer, we want to feature you on sites like the Huffington Post, Social Media Examiner, and Chief Marketer. Every week, we send out a question related to B2B marketing. We use the responses to those questions to fuel the content we write for really popular websites. So head over to sweetfishmedia.com backslash questions and sign up today. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.